Hi guys, welcome to this speed build video in The Sims 4. My name is Irene and today I'm building my post-apocalyptic Atal Bridge settlement. Yes, that very famous bridge in London with obviously the two towers and these suspension cables. I'm going to build it today, but not in the state which it is in right now. No, I'm going to recreate it in a post-apocalyptic setting. And in the two towers you can find a settlement or a two houses later on. The post-apocalyptic setting I wanted to go for in this build is yeah, overgrown but with a lot of water it has as well. Global warming has hit ocean levels has been rising. So a lot of water everywhere but a lot of plants and trees everywhere as well. This video is actually kind of special because it's the start of a new series on my channel starting with this one i'm planning to do and i'm not totally sure about the name for the series yet but i'm going to do a lot of post-apocalyptic themed buildings all famous buildings or special landmarks or cities so think about the pyramids or the eiffel tower or maybe the statue of liberty and i wanted to recreate them in the game but all in a post-apocalyptic setting and i want to use different settings different post-apocalyptic settings for the different builds so like i said this one is in a world where global warming has hit and there's water everywhere but i'm going to do one with a very cold setting as well a frozen world new ice age has hit i want to go for a bird down world as well with a lot of black everywhere so that's what you can expect the next couple of months of course there will be other videos as well mixture of videos because exactly a week from now the new pack will be here snowy escape of course i'm going to do videos with the snowy escape pack next week i think of four days from now we get split leveling in the game so of course i'm going to do videos with split leveling but i'm going to do this series as well and if you guys can help me out <laughs> if you know a cool name for the series let me know and if you have a request for the series let me know as well um of course i only built this one yet but i'm totally planning to do the eiffel tower like i said maybe the pyramids but if you have other requests other famous buildings in mind for me let me know but let's go in this build the tower bridge with the two towers of course i started on these two towers and around the towers i place in these four smaller thinner towers and normally of course you can place them in with just the room tool but you cannot really build round rooms in the game you always have that octagon shape if you want to go for that small kind of round room so i wanted to do something else so i used these chimneys for it to create that look I wanted to go for an item that had the similar, almost the same color as the color or the stones on the wallpaper I wanted to go for on the exterior of these towers and I was very satisfied when I found this chimney because it has almost the same color, the same pattern of these stones on the exterior. Of course, some of them I flipped around some of them i turned around with the tool mods i flipped them around 180 degrees oh and talking about the tool mods under my previous video my base game dune villa i got a couple of comments about the tool mods and i was so busy last week i'm sorry that i wasn't that active with responding to all your comments i really read them all thank you all so much for them i have more time the next week so i'll make sure to and some more comments next week but i got a couple of comments under that video about two mods that i could select more items at once that i didn't have to select every single item separate from each other to size them all down for example or to rotate them thank you guys so much for 
mentioning that to me because of course I didn't knew that I didn't know that and um, I've been only been working with the toolmat for a couple of weeks. If you don't know what the toolmat is, it's an amazing mat by Twisted Maxi. And it lets you rotate items and place them off the lot and you can do more things with it. And the cool thing about it, when you use that mat, but when you upload a build to the gallery, the person that wants to download your build or use your build in their game, they don't need that mod installed. So it doesn't show on the gallery. So that's amazing. But I've only started working with it for a couple of weeks and I didn't know that. So thank you guys so much for mentioning it to me. It saved me so much time, <laughs> especially later on in this build as well, when I'm building the suspension cables for the bridge. But we'll get into that later on. I'm building this on a 64 by 64 lot in Brindleton Bay. My favorite lot. If you saw any of my other videos, I love building here. I love building on a very big lot. And of course, 64 by 64, the biggest lots available in the game. And this particular lot, that ocean at the background and not a distracting background. So... It looks a little bit like a blank canvas in that way. You can create your own world over here. And yeah, I just love building here. Of course, for this massive build, I needed this big size of a lot. But I'm building it in an angle because when I was building it, just I tried it at first building it just normal, like straight. But it didn't have enough space for the suspension cables and in this way I had way more space. So that's why I'm building it in this, yeah, this manner, in this angle. I'm working on the towers and I wanted to, of course I had that post-apocalyptic theme already in mind, that idea. But on the towers I wanted to make them as similar as I possibly could as the real life tower bridge. Of course, there are so many different pictures of the tower bridge online. There are videos from people driving over the tower bridge, there are videos from people swimming under the tower bridge. Yeah, there's so, so many videos, pictures. So of course I had a lot of them next to me while building this. Of the towers I had zoomed in pictures, so I wanted to go for similar windows and I wanted to, when I had these towers finished, I wanted to worry about apocalyptic look. But first I wanted to make these towers as similar as I possibly could. And it really stood out to me, there are so many windows on the tower bridge. Oh my god. <laughs> so over here, a lot of windows as well. And I really took a good look at the window placement too. And roof trims, accents. I made my own roof trims as well with small wall accents. So I really took my time with that. Now we're starting on the suspension cables. I used roofs for them. And on the walls underneath the roofs, I used that method again to remove walls underneath roofs. I talked about it numerous times. I used the two months for it over here. And did you saw that very annoying glitch over there? That, that line through the screen? So strange. When I placed in a roof on the edge of this lot, I got that line in it. Very strange. But I make it, made it work, luckily. But over here you can see that method. I placed in so many doors on the walls underneath the roofs. Just everywhere I used the methods before, but because of an update, it really didn't work anymore. So now I'm using the tool mods and yeah, I placed in so many doors and I selected them all with that amazing tip that you guys gave me <laughs> under my last video. I selected them all and after that, I sized them down as far as I could. So they became invisible. And it really worked, as you can see. In that way, I created these sus suspension cables. And I was so happy that that worked out because, of course, that's a very yeah, important feature of this tower bridge as well. Now these suspension cables are gray, but later on, I'm going for a little bit more of a faded green color. Uh, you can see it over here already. The real tower bridge has a very bright blue suspension cables and fences as well. But 
I use roofs for the cables and we don't have roof trims in that particular blue color. And we have a very bright green one though, but I knew I wanted to do a lot of things with trees everywhere and I thought it didn't stand out that much when I used that very bright green color. So I went for that, that faded green and it's faded light blue on the fences on the side of the roads there. And in my mind, because it's post-apocalyptic, that, that bright blue has faded down into this yeah, kind of faded green color. Same for these fences. They're just light blue, but that's be uh, because of that years and years of, of weather. And so that's why I went for these colors. But in a perfect world, I could go for a more blue color. But well, that's it. We do have still have restrictions in the game but now with more packs and things coming out we get more possibilities with yeah every single pack that comes out of course i wanted to make it like yeah like this post-apocalyptic world so i place in a lot of cars everywhere and i had to think a little bit while i was placing this in because i'm from the netherlands and on the highway on the road we drive on the right side of the road and of course in england they drive on the left side of the road <laughs> so i had to think about that a little bit by uh, when i was placing in all these different cars these cars are of course all debug items and I wanted to go for a mixture of cars, but not for really these very bright colors because I thought it distracted a little bit of the build. And at this point, I forgot that we had these car racks that came with the Stranger Fill pack. So later on, I'll replace a couple of these cars that looked a little bit too bright and too white and too new for me with some of these rusted down car racks. And later on, I will place in mods and dirt and a lot of other things so they don't look that that fresh and that new anymore i just placed in the collapsed bridge and i used a very big stone slab for it a debug item as well and actually you can see these very big yeah foundations where the two towers are actually leaning on and the roads that you can see are on a different level so they're not really attached to each other that's because of course on these under the towers i needed the foundation but underneath the roads i didn't need foundation so it's actually one level higher they're not attached to each other but i made them look attached to each other in that way because i placed in cars over that the line that i still had left over that gap and I placed in some other accents later on, but they're actually not attached to each other. And in that way, I could still create that look of the bridge. But I didn't have an annoying foundation underneath the, the roads there. Normally, I always make the entire thing from the second level and then up. So in that way, I don't have foundation underneath the entire build. I can make my own accents for foundation underneath it. But over here, I really needed that massive chunk of foundation underneath the separate towers. And as you can see right here, the post-apocalyptic look has entered here. <laughs> At first with the towers, I thought it still looked so bright and so white and so new or something. But with these yeah, crumbled down accents, I really thought it yeah it made it look so much more apocalyptic and especially later on when i place in the trees everywhere but as you can see over here as well on this part of the bridge i really took a good look at the original bridge the state which it is in right now and of course i didn't want to go for exactly the same especially over here on these pieces of the bridge because in real life this is way bigger but i thought it looked a little bit strange of course i had to work with size a little bit but i just went through all the different items and i picked items that i thought it worked out very well for particular sections of this tower bridge Originally, there isn't a clock on the tower bridge, but there's a very big yeah, accent with a crown or something on the top of it. But I thought this one looked kind of cool and I wanted to make it in a way that it was 
falling down in the water from the tower bridge and I placed in some cars over there as well. Of course the look of the water will totally change when I change up the ground color and the wall color over there but you can see that in a couple of minutes. I wanted to go for that post-apocalyptic setting, that global warming setting with a lot of water everywhere but I still wanted to make this look good in the world where it was in. In the perfect world we have a massive 64 by 64 lot in an old city. We do have a central park one in San Michino, the city that came with the city living pack for The Sims 4. But it's in the middle of a very modern city and I didn't look apocalyptic at all. I tried it over there as well. So I wanted to make this look like it was just all part of this big ocean and the majority of London has just sunken on the water and has crumbled down. So that's why I went for all these ruin objects. They came with the get together pack and I sized them up and I rotated them. I um, make them sunken into the ground and in that way I thought I could kind of recreate that crumble down city look. Of course I'm placing in these steam crates as well and I always say steam crates I'm not sure if that's the correct term for them but um, you know what I mean and I always use them because I think it can totally change up the look of the water over here I already changed up the color of the ground and the water and the walls but I will change it up in a little bit more of a darker tint in a couple of minutes but I think especially with the water, uh, with the steam accents everywhere, it can really make water look way, way more realistic. Later on I will add more touches on the environment and the surrounding this tower bridge, but I wasn't totally sure at this point in the building process where I wanted to go according to plants and trees and everything. But I already had the idea in my mind for the plants and the overgrown look for the tower bridge. So I decided to start on that first and when I had a look for that I will add in more plants and trees and everywhere all around the thing of course. The ivy that you can see that I'm using here on the towers, they're actually from the Eco Lifestyle pack. There's very gorgeous very pretty ivy with the Discover University pack as well. All debug items, so you have to use a double cheat to enter it. BB.show hidden objects and BB.show live edit objects of that type debug in your search bar. You get a whole array of extra items. But yeah, you have very cool, very yeah, pretty uh, ivy with the Discover University pack as well. But it's not that bright green, it's softer green. And because you could already see a couple of trees surrounding this lot, I wanted to go for a color that was kind of matching with the trees you can already see over there. I love using the trees that you can see surrounding the lot, the cats and dogs trees. When I'm building in a winter world, but when I'm building in a sunny world, I don't like the texture, texture on them that much. But So I wanted to go for different trees, but kind of in the same color scheme. So that's why I went for the ivy that came with the Eco Lifestyle pack. It's a little bit more chunky, but the color is way, way better. And I especially love that one with the very small blue flowers in it. And the cool thing about the ivy, you can just place it in and you have a very cool look immediately. You don't have to place in a lot of small ivy plants everywhere to create patterns of ivy, for example. Of course I wanted to place in a lot of grass everywhere and dirt, I place in dirt piles and yeah, these junk piles they came with the Eco Lifestyle pack as well and the Eco Lifestyle pack is actually an amazing pack if you want to do post apocalyptic builds because there is broken down furniture in it as well like broken fridges or cabinets and a lot of dirt and a lot of, of debris so it's an amazing pack when you want to do post-apocalyptic themed builds and not builds another amazing pack for post-apocalyptic themed builds is the strangerville pack especially for interiors because 
that one came yeah with some cool cool touches cool items for post apocalyptic themed builds so if you're planning to do builds like this eco lifestyle stranger feel definitely the most important packs for that style for this particular style and especially for the towers as well get together was very important and discover university because there are so many windows i already mentioned that in these towers and Discover University came with some gorgeous, very fitting windows for a style like this. When I had the, the plants and the ivy and everything finished on the exterior of the towers, I placed in the trees all around the water on the lot. You could just saw how I went with that. I wanted to make it, like I said already a couple of times, and look overgrown, but with a lot of water everywhere as well. Now we're almost on the interior and yes, I was so disappointed <laughs> because I couldn't make an entrance for this build. No, yeah, I run into such, such an annoying glitch. When I want, and I, I'm i sure it has something to do with all the debug items that I place in, but and that I lowered items down with the tool mod. I'm almost sure it's that but when i wanted to place in stairs on the bottom level the lower level of the entire build i got that message on my screen can't find objects just that and i couldn't place in stairs on the first level <laughs> so annoying if you recognize it that can't find object glitch please let me know if you know the solution please let me know Next Tuesday we'll get a new update for the game and I truly truly hope that that glitch will be fixed. I had that before, <laughs> that I had a glitch in the game and then a week later or two weeks later a new update came and it suddenly all got re resolved. So I really hope that's happening with this one as well. I'm going to check it out as soon as a new update will come out. But when you're in the houses, everything is functional, of course. In the houses, I wanted to go for a very yeah, post-apocalyptic look. A lot of clutter everywhere. These two towers, these houses are off the grid. So there's no electricity. I wanted to make that as real life as I possibly could. But to enter it, you have to use the teleportation cheat. It's actually very, very easy to unlock the cheats. Uh, hold down Ctrl Shift C on your keyboard, then type in testing cheats space true. So testing cheats true. Enter. And after that, just hold shift and click somewhere in your world, somewhere in a room, somewhere, uh, somewhere else in the world. Click there uh, while holding shift and then you can teleport your sim there. And it literally take, takes like a second, two seconds, and your sim is there. So in that way you can still use this build, but like I said, I'm definitely going to try to fix it when the update is here next Tuesday. But while I was talking about the glitch, the interior of these two houses are almost finished. I wanted to go for two like similar kind of houses. I thought you can make cool gameplay with it and especially later on when I have more of these post-apocalyptic builds finished, you can place them in your game throughout all the different worlds and maybe you can make your own cool story all around it. I'm overflowing with ideas. <laughs> So yeah, I was so excited about it. But for the yeah, for the interior, I wanted to go for that post-apocalyptic yeah, feel, but with a couple of kind of medieval touches as well. I went for a mixture between these two over here on the bottom floor. Not really, because below the, uh, here is the road where the cars are. But here is a kind of a kitchen. I place in kitchen tables and grills because, of course, it is off the grid. But then we're on the end of this video. Very curious what you thought about it and <laughs> what you think about the new series. Please let me know in the comments down below. I really hope I could distract your strange week a little bit. You extract you from your strange week a little bit, especially when you're living in America. 
very anxious times right now <laughs> so really hope i could make your day a little bit brighter and a little bit happier if you have some requests for me to build please let me know that as well if you haven't subscribed to my channel you would make me really happy if you did I try to do a lot of different things with my builds. I want to keep you guys inspired for your own builds. Or maybe you just like to watch speed build videos. You're very, very welcome. I will be back yeah, next Tuesday, this Tuesday, when the new split leveling update comes for the game. I will be back then with my new video. So I cannot wait to talk to you then. We're already in the tour, in the outro. I hope you will enjoy it. I hope you will have an amazing day today. Goodbye.